What's up guys, welcome to episode 7 of our modern video series where we take a deck in the format, run it through some matches on Magic Online and talk about some strategy, sideboarding, things like that. Uh, this week we have Grixis Control and I am super excited because Grixis Control is my deck in modern. Uh, for anybody that has been reading my articles on Modern Nexus or watches my stream, they know that Grixis Control is my favorite deck. I play it all the time and this week we have Danny Jessup's uh, 22nd place list from SCG Dallas. Um, he, I don't know his exact record, but I know he was, I think, close to top eight until uh, like a couple rounds, uh, until really deep in the tournament, and then he fell short. Um, but this deck is awesome. It's uh, It does a lot of cool things. I wrote an article about it uh, last week uh, over on Modern Nexus, so check that out. It's called The Evolution of Grixis Control. Um, I think I'll have a link to it uh, somewhere, and if not, you just go to uh, modernnexus.com. You can click on my name and find it that way. Um, and this deck's great, we're gonna get into it, but uh, first I'd like to thank both Card Hoarder and Modern Nexus. For those, uh, for those that might be new to the series, um, Modern Nexus sponsors the video series and hosts the videos uh, both on their YouTube page and their website, so um, you're probably watching the video on one of those two places, so make sure you check out the other place, they've got a lot of cool content. And Card Hoarder loans us uh, all the cards that uh, we need to play different decks in the format every week, so big thanks to them. Um, you can check out their site at cardhoarder.com. They've got this really cool deck upload tool. Um, for those that play Magic Online, you can just uh, take any list and put it in and um, uh, price it out and get a whole bunch of information from it, and then you can buy it, and their delivery bots will message you and, uh, and send cards to you in the client. It's uh, really quick, really easy, um, very simple. But that is that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I will see you guys in a minute for the deck tech. All right, so we'll try and keep this short. I have like a million things that I could say about Grixis Control, but I'm just kind of try and talk about the main points. Um, as always, we'll start with the mana base. 23 land, we are playing 10 fetch lands. Um, most Grixis Control lists play 22, um, but this one is playing an extra land uh, because we're doing things like going all the way up to 4 mana for Pia and Kirin Nalar, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, we're really trying to Kologon's Command back a threat and then replay it. Um, the same with Rise and Fall, so we can appreciate the extra mana. Um, we can get in trouble sometimes by flooding out a little bit, especially with things like, um, you know, like a four land hand, Inquisition, Lightning Bolt, Thought Scour. Uh, Thought Scour and Serum Visions can, um, you know, kind of get us, because you're getting a random draw off of Serum Visions and Thought Scour, you can, you can get hands that are like three land removal spell to, you know, Thought Scour, Serum Visions, and... Um, based on the random draws off of those spells, you know, your hand could be awesome. You could hit, you know, spell off Thought Scour, spell off Serum Visions, or you could just hit, you know, land, land, and you're in trouble. Um, but this list trims the Thought Scour. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about that, because at its best, Thought Scour is Black Lotus, um, and it sets up a whole bunch of synergies with Snapcaster Mage and uh, Colgon's Command, getting back a creature that we mill over, things like that. Um, but I understand why. Um, we're no longer playing four Delve creatures. Uh, most of us play two Tasker, two Gurmag Angler, and we've got we've gotten rid of the uh, Gurmag Angler. We're playing Pia and Kirin Nalar instead. Um, so I can understand why. Um, you gotta, you know, when you're trying to fit in all this cool stuff like Rise and Fall and uh, Jace Vrin's Prodigy, the cuts have to come from somewhere. Um, so you'll see, yeah, plus the the playset of Inquisition of Kozilek. Um So one of the big changes from the normal Grixis control list to this is uh, um, building around the power of Jace Vrin's Prodigy, which means, you know, more, um, not necessarily sorcery speed, but basically, you know, less uh, reactive elements like counter spells and more proactive things like removal and discard, um, things like that. So we're only playing three removal spell, uh, three counter spells, excuse me, a remand and two mana leak um, instead of the, you know, seven or eight or, you know, six, six to eight counter spells that most Grixis controllers play. Uh, we don't have Spell Snare. Uh, we don't have cryptic command. We're we're playing a very proactive game, similar to um, you know Jun midrange. You know our deck is styled after the Jun midrange type decks, even all the way down in the mana base. You know playing fast lands like um, Black Cleave Cliffs, um, and I think uh, I, yeah, I really like this deck. We're basically Jun midrange, but with card manipulation and counter spells, um, and then Jace Fringe Prodigy, which when he lives, he's absolutely incredible. Um, I think he is quickly becoming, uh, he's he's already like warping standard around himself. Um, for those that might not be playing standard, Jace Friends Prodigy is hands down the best card in standard. Um, and he's already finding his way into, uh, um, I think I saw him pop up in like a vintage list that, uh, that LSV put on Twitter. Um, but yeah, this card is insane. 
Uh, you can do things like, you know, turn one, Thought Scour, turn two, play a Jace, um, turn three, activate Jace, flip him, play a Tassiger, and you can pass holding up Mana Leak and Remand. Um, so that's pretty insane. Like, you've, you've looted, you've got a uh, Jace Fringe Prodigy um, on f up to six loyalty, and you've got a four or five deal creature that you cast for one mana, and you're still holding up Mana Leak. Um, those are the craziest draws, uh, but even normal draws, like, you know, um, you know, turn one, discard, turn two, fetch, your envisions, or turn two, Jace, and then turn three, you can just start playing out your hand, like, bolt something, your envisions, and that's more than enough to flip. Um, once you start getting into the mid-game is when Jace uh, really shines. Once um, you can get him to flip, he's incredibly hard to remove. He's really easy to kill when he's on his creature side, but once he's on his planeswalker side, he's incredibly hard to remove, just because a lot of the removal in modern is either damage based or you know things like path to exile that don't hit planeswalkers um so there's not a lot of things like detention sphere and uh um what are some other ones maelstrom pulse things like that that hit planeswalkers once they flip um kind of and the reason that is is because uh liliana the veil has really been one of the only planeswalkers that has been good enough for modern uh, most of the other planeswalkers they're not necessarily too slow it's just uh they're they're expensive enough to where the um, the advantage that you're generating when they come down is not worth their mana cost. Uh, normally, you know, for four mana, you're casting things like Splinter Twin. Um, a Johnny Vengeant kind of isn't where you want to be. So Liliana being kind of one of the only uh, Planeswalkers to see play in Modern, and, um, you know, if you play Liliana and tick her up, uh, that's a common play because it gets her out of bolt range because that's really one of the only pieces of interaction there are for Planeswalkers outside of Abrupt Decay. Um, so yeah, Jason, if you can get him to flip, he's amazing. And even if he does die, we were, we're so set up for, uh, finding ways to bring him back with Rise and Fall and Cole Guns Command. Um, what else do we have to say about this list? I love the, uh, the four Inquisition of Kozilek in the main deck. Um, it, it fits in with our proactive strategy. It's great for, you know, landing a Tassiger and taking their Path to Exile. Against a lot of the green mid-range decks, they really rely on Path to Exile to find a way to get rid of uh, this guy, because a 4-5 is just a big roadblock. Um, Tasker is great for blocking opposing Tarmogoyfs, things like that. And um, we're actually, you know, kind of weak to Tarmogoyf. We have a few answers to it. Uh, terminate Dreadboard, go for the throw at Liliana. Um, but outside that, you know, we have to get tricky with, like, Lightning Bolt dueling up with Grimlavamancer or things like that to answer it. But just Inquisition taking it out of their hand is awesome. Um, among all of the other millions of things that Inquisition of Kozilek hits in the format. Um, I think that's it. We still have the four Serum Visions. We cut a Thought Scour. Uh, we're only playing three Snapcaster Mage. Um, I can understand why, but Snapcaster is awesome. It's possible that we want to be playing four Snapcaster, three Jace. Uh, I'm not ready to make that call yet. Um, one, because I don't have enough experience with this exact list. And two, um, this list is really built to maximize the power of Jace, um, so I can understand why, you know, the, I guess the, the debate between the fourth Jace or the fourth Snapcaster, um, Danny Jessup chose to play for Jace, but um, yeah, we will talk about Pia and Kieran Nalar. For those that are unfamiliar, um, this guy, or these parents, I guess, um, they're awesome. They're 2-2, uh, that you get two 1-1 one -one Thopters when it comes into the battlefield, and then you can pay three to uh, fling a artifact, so not just a Thopter, um, I guess if you wanted to fling a Nihil Spell Mom you could, uh, to do two damage to target creature or player. Um, so the ability is cool, but this is great by just like, uh, you know, just a great mid-range value creature that, you know, the 2-2 body can die, they can kill it with Lightning Bolt, but we're, se we're set up to get it back with Kolagon's Command and Rise and Fall, and just keep casting it and generating that advantage. Um, the Thopters are awesome for uh, you know, chumping and letting our J stay on the battlefield longer and buy s and uh, recast spells to pull us back into the game or, um, you know, attacking opposing planeswalkers or trading with lingering souls. Uh, before we, most lists should have been playing in Electrolyze just because this deck has a lot of trouble dealing with lingering souls. I know lingering souls hasn't really been in the format that much. Um, so a lot of the Grixis control list started trimming down and getting rid of Electrolyze completely. And Pia and Kira Nalar is a great way to have built-in Lingering Souls protection without having to devote a card slot to it. So kind of like, you know, cheating some Lingering Souls uh, protection into the list. And yeah, he's, uh, he's a great finisher. He can be, or they can be a little awkward sometimes. Um, you know, Pia and Kira Nalar isn't doing much when your opponent is casting Scapeshift. 
or um, you know casting gigantic things out of Tron or something like that. But uh, for all of the mid range matchups and um, even for the aggressive matchups, P and Kurnalar is a great uh, a great spell to build to in the mid game um, that can either pull us back to parity while we're behind or uh, when we're even start to pull us ahead. And once we get to the point where we're casting it two or three times over the course of the game, um, that's that's an end game that we're building to, similar to how uh, Cryptic Command was the end game that we were playing to in the old Grixis control list. You, you know, you're just trying to live to cast a crypt Cryptic Command and you know counter draw a card so you could get to six mana and Snapcaster do it again. Um, and this is just a more proactive way to you know kind of bury our opponent in uh, card and resource and mana advantage um so yeah he's great uh we've got a liliana the veil in here also um i would like to see more liliana but she's tough on the mana base and um i don't know this this list is already so jam-packed full of stuff that i don't know if we can really afford it but uh yeah i think that's it um there are a few you know a bunch of other uh nuances that i didn't cover but um i've talked about them at length in uh, my articles on modern nexus i've written a bunch on Grixis control um, especially the one that I wrote last week talking about this deck specifically and uh, all the other Grixis control decks along the way. So definitely check that out. Um, but that is the main deck. We will be back for the sideboard. All right, so looking at the sideboard, we, uh, we're starting off with two Dispel. Um, Dispel is awesome. It's one of the best blue cards in Modern. Uh, I think it is the best blue card in Modern behind probably Snapcaster Mage. And I think Jace Vrin's Prodigy is up there in the conversation now too. Um, everybody, we, we talked about this in my article, but... Um, the effect that Gurmag Angler and Tassar the Golden Fang have had on the format has forced decks that wouldn't normally be playing um, a lot of like instant speed interaction uh, to be playing things like Path to Exile just because we're capable of playing a Tassar the Golden Fang or a Gurmag Angler on turn two and if they don't have an answer for it my cat is destroying things if they don't have an answer for it they you know there's they don't have anything to do. They're just, they're faced like, with this gigantic roadblock that's going to start uh, not only shutting them down on the ground, but start hitting them for five and putting them on an incredibly fast clock. Um, so Dispel is awesome because uh, it just gives us a one-mana answer to um, a small percentage of, uh, or I guess, a, a wide, every deck in the format has like a, a couple spells in their deck devoted to interacting with us and that we're able to just answer it so easily with one mana um, puts them in the squeeze of trying to find you know their second path to exile or something like that to deal with our Gurmag Angler. Um, so yeah, Dispel is awesome. Uh, not to mention, you know, just countering a Terminate on our Jace Friends Prodigy is great. Um, countering a Collected Company, um, it's great against in all the blue matchups. The, uh, the card is awesome. Um, Dark Blast is sweet. It's just uh, another you know neat way to get value out of our Thought Scour. Um, once we use it once, we can dredge it back. Um, it's great against uh, Infect, great against Affinity. Um, I guess we play it against Tokens. I don't think we really need it. Um, I haven't... Uh, I haven't... I've seen Dark Blast in a lot of sideboards, but I've never played it in my own list just because I didn't think it was high enough impact. Um, but I, can, I definitely understand why it's here. Um, especially with, uh, you know, the kind of... Um, this deck isn't really looking to control and, you know, like take complete control of the game like the Cryptic Command versions. So a grindy card like this that you can use multiple times and, uh, you know, just keep dredging and ensure that you're not drawing lands once you get into the late game. Even if the minus one, minus one might not necessarily be that great. Um, you know, just dredging to make our, our Jace better by giving us access to more things to um, flashback or, you know, being able to play a Tassiger or like a second Tassiger for cheaper later in the game is great. So the dredgeability is sweet. Um, I don't know, this is this is a card that I normally end up cutting, but I think it's fine. Uh, Thought Seize is a fifth discard, fifth discard spell for the matchups where we need it. Um, the blue matchups, the combo matchups, um, not much else to say about that. Renny Volley for Twin and other decks that have white and blue creatures that we want to kill. Uh, Vandal Boss for Affinity, Tron sometimes. Um, Molten Rain. I will talk about this card a little bit. Um, for the, I guess, kind of land destruction hate that you see in these uh, Grixis decks, you have the option of either um, like three or four Molten Rain, three or four Fulminator Mage, or like one or two Blood Moon. Um, and 
I think it's really up to the player on which one you want to choose, but uh, there are, I guess, some incentives to go one way or the other. Uh, Jace Friend's Prodigy pushes us towards wanting Molten Rain a little bit more, um, you know, because we can uh, do a Thought Scour on one, um, Jace on two, and like we could even just mill over a Molten Rain with a Thought Scour, and then we could flip our Jace on three and then immediately flash back a Molten Rain or cast one if we had it in hand. Um, that's a great play against uh, decks like Tron, which is Tron and Amulet, which are both still pretty rough matchups for this deck, especially now that we're not playing as many counter spells. Um, but yeah, like the, the decision to go Molten Rain over Fulminator Mage, uh, more Coligon's Command and less Jace pushes you towards wanting Fulminator Mage a little bit more. Um, and Blood Moon is a good spell. Um, the thing I'll say about Blood Moon is that it can be more high impact and it has the advantage of we don't have to devote as many sideboard slots to that type of effect because it's so high impact. So like we could play four Fulminator Mage on our board or we could play two Blood Moon and they're probably close like percentage level wise uh, in the matchups where you bring it in. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's, that it's so cut and dry that full, four Fulminator Mage equals two Blood Moon um, and like you know your matchup's gonna be the same regardless. But generally if uh, and this is assuming that you know they don't have a plan for Blood Moon or um, you know your Tron players. There was a time where they were always bringing in Nature's Claim because we had Blood Moon, but now that we haven't had Blood Moon for a while, they're not really bringing it in that much anymore. Um, I guess the one thing I'll say is it's up to you. Uh, if you're not seeing a lot of people bringing in Blood Moon hate against you, then maybe you might want Blood Moon, and then you could you know use that extra sideboard slot for something else. Um, Molten Rain is great. It's a great way to combat those matchups, um, but Blood Moon is really high impact, and the matchups are tough. Um, I don't know. I've kind of I've been you know debating with myself you know where I want to be on that spectrum. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is a Staticaster uh, great for tokens? Great for um, you know all the matchups where there's X ones, Lingering Souls, Affinity. Um, Infect, uh, yeah, you land one of these against Infect and it's pretty much game over, assuming, you know, you're not tapping out to do it or you're not doing it in the middle of combat and then they can, you know, load up. But, um, yeah, this is a caster is great. Uh, lights out against Infect, great against Affinity. I don't know if we need to. Um, again, I'm not going to say that we don't need to because I haven't played this exact list uh, that much. Um, but normally I've always had one as a Staticaster on my board and I've been fine with it. And while this list, I think, is probably about 10 spells off of what I've been playing, um, it's still, you know, relatively the same strategy. Um, so it's interesting to see two here, but I don't know, maybe Danny was, you know, worried about the mirror or, you know, expected a lot of Lingering Souls or something. Uh, Dreadbore, um, you know, just a second one to match the one in the main deck. Um, great against all of the mid-range matchups, good against killing Liliana the Veil. Um, kills a uh, Karn and Ugin, which is awesome. Um, normally, you know, if Tron can land a Karn and just take it up, we, there's nothing we can do. But Dreadbore is an awesome effect that we can have access to. And uh, the thing about Jace is that, you know, you have to, if you're flashing back a spell, you have to use the sorcery speed. So a lot of times we would be, you know, using Jace to flash back the sorcery speed terminate. So at that point, why aren't you just playing a Dreadbore, which is why he's playing a Dreadbore. Um, and being able to kill a Planeswalker is great. Just having that effect to, you know, terminate a Tarmogoyf or be able to Heroes Downfall um, a Liliana the Veil that's been taking up for a turn or two is awesome. So Jabor is a, a pretty good spell and um, uh, I like that it's here. Rise and Fall is awesome. Um, this card is uh, sometimes him to Torok and then other times it's like bouncing a Jace Friends Prodigy in our graveyard and a Snapcaster Mage or a Pia and Kira Nalar. Uh, on the battlefield back to our hand for two mana. This card is insane. If uh, yeah, if we've kind of stabilized and you know uh, we're still doing things and our opponent's still doing things and we get to cast one of these, it just it normally puts us so far ahead that the game's pretty much over. And um, yeah, in the combo matchups, just you know casting fall to make them discard two cards at random is excellent. Even if it's just a random card in their hand and one land, oftentimes that's good enough. Um, it's awesome against scape shift. Uh, just because, you know, once they start getting into the later turns, um, you know, they've got that, sca uh, that scape shift and a few counter spells and they're trying to overload our mana with scape shift plus answer plus answer on one turn. And, um, you know, we can just fall 
and either take their escape shift or take some of their answers out of their hand um, the turn before or even the turn of and uh, it's awesome I love this card uh, Nihil Spellbomb for uh, the other Grixis decks for Living End for other decks that abuse the graveyard um, I like this card over things like uh, Leyline of the Void or um, I don't know, Relic of Progenitus exiles all cards in all graveyards um, Sometimes, uh, like, I've played a Nihil Spellbomb, and then I went to Leyline of the Void uh, for a little bit when there was a lot of, um, you know, graveyard decks uh, running around. I just wanted, you know, that kind of effect that just, you know, knocked them out of using their graveyard completely. But, uh, yeah, Nihil Spellbomb's great. And then a Spellskite, just a general answer. I, I don't know, I've been moving away from, you know, using uh, random artifacts like Spellskite just because, you know, the mirror will see us, you know, running up against other Kolagons commands. Um, but yeah, he's a great uh, general answer. Um, a good a good spell to have access to in your sideboard when you've got things like Molten Rain and Dark Blast and Is It Static Caster. Um, you know, you're using devoting slots to a Vandal Blast. That's so matchup specific. Uh, having a way to just you know have some sort of uh, thing that you can go to after sideboard uh, for a bunch of different matchups uh, kind of you know lets us cheat and get that. Um, you know, like that 16th sideboard slot. Uh, so I, I can see this. I, I, I understand the spell skite here. Um, I just might be a little worried uh, about opening myself up to Kolagon's command. But um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I uh, talked for a good amount of time. So uh, yep, we'll be back for round one.